In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to cut out and deal with complex artwork using the US Cutter Edition of Vinyl Master Cut. If you'd like to know where to get more advanced tools and features to deal with things such as oversized artwork, dealing with repeat jobs, and say merging multiple jobs together, please go to the end of this lesson for more details. And please bear in mind that Vinyl Master Cut is the basic level of the software and there are much more advanced tools and features in higher levels. But let's look at Vinyl Master Cut now. So I've created some pages here just to show you uh, how to deal with some of these more complex designs and artwork like we see here. Now I'm assuming that you'll have done the previous lessons about how to set up your software, uh, set up your cutter and cut your first job. I mean it's very important you go and do that before doing this lesson because you need to have those basics down and then you can come and uh, watch this lesson and go through it. So make sure you've done that. So okay, we're looking at this artwork here and we can see uh, there's a lot going on. And I'll go down a wireframe down here and when we view this object in or this artwork in wireframe we can see you know there's a lot of colors here, uh, it's quite complex, uh, it's all lining up very accurately and we want to be able to cut this out efficiently and be able to lay it out on the job easily. So if I come up here and send this to the cutter, so I'll click on this button here and we get the send to be cut module come up, we can see our artwork here. So we've got our cutter and in this particular case we just want to cut one of these. Now if you want to cut multiple quantities you can, that, what that'll do is just uh, send more of the same design to the vinyl spooler and as you cut them out it'll just count down for you. Now we can do things like rotate like so, we can mirror this, I mean if it's going to go on the inside of a glass window and you want to see it from the outside you'd cut it and mirror. We can also advance after plot so when the cutter's finished cutting this artwork out it'll actually push the cut file out so that we can then just cut it off with a knife there and remove it from the cutter. We can cut in absolute position, I'll come back to that uh, in a little while. We can separate by colour, now that's an important thing here because obviously this artwork is multicoloured so if I check on that now see the colours that we've got, as you can see there. So that's a very important thing to know about when we've got multicoloured artwork. We definitely need to be able to separate by colour. Now another thing we can do is assign colours to tools. If I uncheck this now and click on Assign Tools by Colour, you can see these come up. I'll come back to these a little bit later on. We'll just stick with Separate by Colour for now. And also Add Registration Marks. So if I check on that, you can see these little registration marks that are put in. Now, this has got nothing to do with contour cutting. This lesson's all about vinyl cutting, so don't get mixed up between these marks being used somehow for contour cutting. That's not what their application is. By all means, do the uh, contour cutting lesson, and that'll explain to you how registration marks work for arms cutters and laser pointer cutters, but this is certainly for vinyl cutting. Okay, this has got nothing to do with uh, contour cutting. Then we've got other things like speed weed, uh, weld text, and speed weed text only. And up here we've got cutter control and we can adjust things like the blade offset, we can cut the holes first, the number of passes. Now when we talk about this what we mean is, is how many times we cut over the same object again and again and again. So if I set this to five it'll actually cut it out five times on top of itself. The time you would use that is if you're cutting some uh, like engineering grade vinyl, that reflective stuff that you see on the, uh, on the freeways and highways and things. Um, that often needs to be cut at least twice and sometimes three times. I mean you might be cutting card for example and you may need to cut that a couple of times. So you can actually set the passes. Just a little tip, if you've got passes set to one and your cut file keeps cutting on top of itself and you can't work out why on earth it's doing that, it could well be because you've duplicated the artwork multiple times on top of itself. And that's incredibly easy to do with the plus key on the keyboard. So I'll just close out this for a moment. If I grab this artwork here, if I click on something like this piece here, and I hit the plus on the keyboard, so plus, 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 it's multiple copies of this thing now, um, but you'd never know by looking at it. But if I click on it and move it out, you can see, you know, I've duplicated that multiple times. Now if I go and send that to the cutter, I was just undid that, if I go and send that to the cutter, it's going to see that as four separate pieces and we'll cut it four times. So just be wary that that is an issue. So just undo to where we were. Okay, so we'll just keep going now. Back to where we were and separate by colour and you can see that it remembers 
the settings that I had when I originally came in here separate by color was unchecked now it remembers your last settings so just be wary that when you come back into the send to be cut module it's going to remember what you did last time and that's to save your time so you don't have to go and check all these things all over again okay so let's look at other issues here we've got cutter control that we've just been speaking about let's go to settings okay so here in settings we can set the position X and position Y now what that's referring to is how far away the cut file is from the blade that you've set at 0, 0 on the cutter. So when you're about to cut a file, what you will normally do is you'll put your blade in the bottom right hand corner of your cutter, uh, you'll set the uh, origin to 0, 0 and put the cutter on online. And it will immediately start cutting from this position, as you can see in the preview here. However, you may want to offset this and there's lots of reasons you might want to do that. So, for example, if I make the position 2 inches uh, to the left and then 2 inches up, you can see what it does there. It actually, although the origin is here, it will actually come across 2 inches and go up 2 inches and then cut the file from there. So you do have that control if you need it, like so. The other thing too is the weed box offset. You can set that to whatever you like, 0.1 of an inch or 0.2 of an inch, whatever you, know, you prefer to work in. By weed box, I'm talking about this square that is put around artwork and that's just so it's easier to weed. I'll turn this off for now. Okay so back to what the main objective of the uh, lesson is here in regards to this particular artwork. What we want to do is cut this out and weed it and apply it onto the job as easily as possible. One way to do that is to use registration marks by checking here and as mentioned these have got nothing to do with contour cutting they're purely for vinyl cutting. Now the idea behind registration marks is quite simple. You have the marks in each corner like this and as you can see as I go through each colour you see the same marks and they all cut out with each colour like so. The idea is simple. You lay out the first colour, you cut out the next colour and weed it out and you lay that out perfectly on top. So you put this colour registration mark on top of this colour registration mark and you do the same with this one and the same with this one. So you, you basically cut out black cut out this skin colour, cut out the red, cut out the yellow and put black skin colour, red and yellow down all together. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? And when you do that, it lays out perfectly. But the problem with this is that you tend to have these situations where you might only have a small amount of one particular colour within a piece of artwork like this. And of course, effectively what happens is you lose all this vinyl. And, you know, if you're working on a budget or or to a budget, clearly you don't want to be wasting media. Okay, so what's the solution? Well, it's really quite simple. What you can do, so we'll just close out of this for a moment, place registration marks by simply selecting all the artwork and clicking on objects, place registration marks, which does exactly the same thing. But what we can do now is we can select each set of these and put them in place, which is a little bit more efficient when it comes to the use of the vinyl or the media. And by simply moving these uh, around like so, selecting the artwork like this, sending it to our cutter, and we turn off the automatic registration marks, because no point cutting them twice, you see that the registration marks are now in these positions, and now I'm using a lot less media, as you can see. I'm using a lot less red. Um, in this particular case, red the, is the main uh, issue. The other colours aren't too bad. Now, you can see this one here, I'm kind of wasting a little bit here, so I go cancel. Now, can I improve that? I probably can. Bring that into, say, there, and send that to the cutter. And you can now see with this color, I'm not wasting quite as much. And the same theory applies. I cut out the black, I cut out this color, and I apply it on top, and I just put it on the same registration marks. I cut out this color, put it on the same registration marks, and yellow here, and put it on the same registration marks. And it'll do exactly the same job. It'll come out the same way. So that's an efficient way of using registration marks. Now, some people complain about the registration marks and say, oh, they don't like the shape of them or whatever it happens to be. And all they are is parallelograms on top of each other. If I go into wireframe mode, you can see that. There is absolutely nothing stopping you from making your own registration marks, and I'll show you how you do that. So say I just want um, plus symbols, for example. So I might make that 0, 3 and I might make it say half an inch high for example okay so I've made my own plus symbol here I just hit press plus on the keyboard hit the rotate button and bring it around 90 degrees I go out of wireframe mode 
and you can see I've created a little plus symbol. All I need to do is apply the right color to this. So I simply select over it, come over to this fly out, and I click on registration color. And you can see now it becomes the registration color. So I can delete this like so, put that like there, zoom out like this, and delete that one. I hit the plus on the keyboard to do a perfect duplicate of that one. Come across, delete this one here, delete this one here. Again, plus on the keyboard, drag it over, plus on the keyboard, drag it to this position, and send the whole thing to the cutter. And you can see I've now got my own uh, registration marks that I've designed. And that's how easy it is to do that. That's a great way of saving media and making the layout much easier using the registration marks. And now when I'm ready to send it to the vinyl spooler, I simply click spool all and you can see it loads it into the vinyl spooler ready to cut out. I simply click cut now and that will send to the uh, vinyl spooler. Now I'm going to talk more about these advanced tools a little bit later. Uh, I'll come back to those. I'll just close out the spooler for the moment. Right, let's move on to the next job, this one here. So as we can see, we have world out overlapping lines in text. So what this is about is the rest of those tools and features that we see in Send to be Cut. I wanted to show you how to use those. If I go down to wireframe, we can see the problem here, if I zoom in a bit, is we have all this text that overlaps itself, as you can see. And if we cut this out, we're going to end up with all these little bits uh, that are going to be cut in between the letters here in this cursive type text, which is really not very good. And if I select all of this and I come down to this tool here and click Weld, I can weld that out. And that's fine, but the problem is if I save this now, I can't edit this text anymore because it's no longer text. It's been converted to curves. So that's not very useful. So let's undo that. What we can do is keep it as text with the overlapping lines. And I'll just go back to normal view. If I send that to the cutter, you can still see all the overlapping lines and I can zoom in to show you that. What we can do is come down to Weld Text. When I check on that, you can see, when I uncheck and check, you can see that what's happening. It's automatically welding it out. And the great thing is, is that doesn't affect our original artwork, which we've saved off. So that tool is very useful for welding out overlapping text. Now the next thing I'll show you is this one, which is Speedweed. Okay, so if I select that and send that to the cutter, we can see we have the circles and the word speedweed. Now, i uncheck weld text. As you can see, it remembers what I did last time. If I check auto speedweed, you can see what's happening here. I'll just zoom in so it's a bit more clear. What's happening is the program's putting a box around each one of these objects and then putting a cut line through each individual weed box but it doesn't actually cut the internal object, so it doesn't cut the text or the shape here. The reason why we use speed weed is to greatly decrease the time it takes to actually weed out vinyl. So once this is cut and you're about to weed it, you can lift up the top right hand corner and literally tear out the vinyl without pulling out any of the actual cut file itself, only the excess vinyl here, and weed it out. Uh, and that's a great way and a very fast way of weeding through loads of uh, text-based cut files or these sorts of things where it's very repetitive and it's quite quick to weed it out using this process. Now I'm just going to zoom out now. If I uh, check, say, uncheck this and only check Speedweed text only, you can see the program detects uh, the text and will only apply the Speedweed to that. Now if I auto Speedweed, it does, it does both. If I add a weed box, you can see it puts a weed box around all the objects and I can auto speed weed and auto weed box as well. That's how speed weed works. So let's now look at positioning. Now I'll just close out of this and we'll go to the next page here. Right, so occasionally you'll get a file, I'll just zoom in, a file like this where you actually want to cut out the cut file in a very specific position on the vinyl itself. Like in this particular case where we've got a perfect edge here and a perfect edge here on say etch material and we want to cut this out, this shape out and this logo out, precisely a certain distance from the, both these edges. Uh, one, because it's a safe way of actually creating the artwork, and secondly, it saves very expensive material, because etched material, as we know, is quite expensive. And we want to get this sort of effect, as you can see here. Let's delete that out now. 
Right, and the other thing I'll do too is I'll go to Objects uh, Manager and I'll just show you this. I'll click on this door and go to the current page and we'll select the image, and so I'll go to Fill and I'll set this to say 100. So it's quite see-through. I'll just pop that away for a moment. Uh, the reason I've done that is so you can see the page here. So we're going to use the page as our reference point or our origin point. So what we want to do is set this particular, this is 24 inch uh, vinyl here, which you can see I've set it to 24 inches, the page size, to represent the exact width of the vinyl. And we want to apply this etch material inside this door frame here, in this window part of the door. And to do that, what we need to do is cut this cut file in the exact right position. So I'll show you how that's done. So if I select on that artwork and I send it to the cut file, you can see what we've got here. Oh, speed weed text only is still on. Okay, we don't need separate by colour. So we've got this kind of border and we've got this logo here. But the problem is, if this cuts out, it's going to cut from the bottom right hand corner when I set the origin here and we've got no way of controlling this position. So what we need to do is go to absolute position. So what this means is that, I'll just move this out of the way for a moment, as you can see here, based on the page position, it's basically saying that the bottom right hand corner where this uh, red dot is, that's the origin position, and it's what you see is what you get cutting. So I'm positioning the artwork relevant to the page, and I'm actually setting it to the absolute position, so it's going to cut it out as if this is the page here as you can see. You can see how those two match. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to use the top left origin. So what we're saying is, is that we want to offset this border here exactly this distance from here and this distance from here as we've designed it in this job here so to do that i use top left origin i check that on and now what's happening is is this position here this point here i'll just close out of this is actually representing this point here so if i zoom in what we're saying is is that from this position down and across I so now send this uh, to the cutter again. We don't want to cut that dot. We'll just get that out of the way and just select this. We're saying that where that dot was is exactly the same distance down and across. So that when I cut this out of my media that's exactly 24 inches wide, it will cut this in the exact correct place. So that when I weed it out, I can go onto the job, as you can see here, and I'll just turn this door back to what it was. 255. So when I go into the actual, onto the job itself, and I've cut this vinyl out, and I weed it, the etch material, I weed this inside, these parts outside of the etch, and I position the etch in the top left hand corner, and stick it down, and then squeegee it out as I go down, I will obviously have to trim this right side, but it will it'll go down and be in the exact right position because what I've done is I've sent this to the cutter and I've used absolute position and used top left origin to make sure that it cuts exactly the same distance down and the same distance across from the top left hand corner as I've designed it. And that's how you use that particular tool. So I'll just close out of this now and we'll go to the next page. Okay, so in this job, what we've got here is an outline as you can see, and these shapes inside, which are actually going to be fold lines. And when I cut this out of a card type material, I can end up with something that looks like these things. And there's any number of design shapes you can get and bring them into the software and then cut them out using some of these special tools that we've got. So I'll just delete that now. You get the idea of what that's all about. So we've got this shape. So we've got this shape, and what we want to do is send it over to our cutter and apply different tools at different times to end up with this card being cut out with score marks and perforated cuts etc. Now it's quite easy to do but there are some steps involved so I'll show you how to do those. So what we've got to do is send this to be cut and the send to be cut module comes up as usual. Now as you can see we've got separate by colour here and we can see these component parts. The problem is is that we want to cut this all out on one piece of card. We don't want to be taking card out, putting it back in, taking it out, putting it back in, and so on. What we want to do is actually have this 
put into our cutter, the origins uh, set here, and it goes through. The first thing that we'll do was score all these marks for folding. Then it will come along and it will perforate cut all this out. And then it'll cut this little piece out here, which you can see in here, which is in there, so that falls out. Then we can just cut off the card here and we can then just sort of pop this out of the card and then fold these lines here. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we've got to do is come up and uncheck separate by color. And then what we need to do is assign tools by color. Now what this does is it takes all these different colors and assigns them to the one layout as you can see in the preview here. So now we can see the entire job here rather than being in separate pieces. And what this is telling us is that the cutter will come in and it will do whatever we ask it to in the order we've set it here. Now by the order, what I'm talking about is the first item gets cut first, the second item gets cut second, the third item gets cut third, and so on and so forth. The problem we've got here is it's out of order. The last thing we want to do is come in here and contour cut out this piece so it falls out and causes all sorts of problems for us. So to adjust the order, we need to work out what we want to actually occur. So in this particular example, what we do want is the fold line to be cut first or scored first in this particular case. It's a special tool that you put in your cutter and it's a bit like a ball on the end of a stick and it comes through and it scores all these shapes so they're easily folded in the card. We want to do that first so I'll move that up like so. So now the fold line colour will be scored first. So when you put the card in the cutter, set the origin and start this job, the first thing it will do is come through and score these lines here. The next thing it will do is come and come to a cut this piece here, but we don't want that to happen, so we need to push that down, because what we want to happen second is it to come along and perforate here. Now by perforation I'm talking about a line, a little space, a line, a little space, or a cut, a little space, a cut, a little space. So when it's finished and you eject the card and you cut it off, it'll actually sort of pop out of the card. And then the final thing we want to do is cut this out and that's actually a proper cut and that will actually cut that piece out and it will fall out but it'll be right at the end and it will have no effect on anything. So now we've got the order sorted out the next thing we've got to consider is how are these tools actually used by the cutter and we can actually adjust that. So what we can do is come and click on this edit button and you'll see this window pops up and this gives us some different settings and in this particular case we want to set the blade type because we're doing a fold line uh, color to a creasing tool. So we put that there and we may want to adjust our overcut and our blade offset. And we can adjust that to anything we like. And we can click apply. And now that tool is now set. We can come in and do the next tool, click edit, and do the same thing here. We can change it to, this, this is for perforating cutting, so what we might do is do a drag knife at 60 degrees and an overcut of three. So it goes past the last point, the last node, and cuts just a little bit further so that it definitely cuts it through the card. Apply. And this thing here, the last uh, contour cut in the line, we just want to use a standard blade here. And everything, leave it as normal and click Apply. So now what we're doing is we're saying to the program, right, what we want you to do is come in and use this tool here and score, use this blade and perforate cut, and use this blade and contour cut. And what you can do now is go click on Spool All, and that loads it directly into the vinyl spooler, as we can see here. And you'll see our three colours are brought in because it's seen as one job under the current folder in the vinyl spooler. And you can see the job that we've just created. So what we can do now is click Cut Now, proceed with cutting, and you're immediately asked to insert the fold crease tool. Click OK. It goes through and cuts it. You're asked for this drag knife, so you put that into the cutter and then you're asked for this knife and you put that into the cutter. And once you're finished, you eject the card, you cut it off, and then you can pop the artwork out, fold it all, and you create your box shape. Now, while I was doing this, you might have noticed there was no information. If I click on one of these fold lines and go cut preset, there's nothing here about the speed and force. Well, that depends on what cutter you've got. So if I go to the connection tab and I change this to say a Titan cutter and go back to the preview and click say fold line and cut preset. You can see now I've got cutting force and cutting speed. And I can apply this to each individual tool. So if I come down to perforation color and click cut preset, I can actually change this for each individual tool. And apply that and come here and change this one. 
and I can change its settings here, etc, etc. So depending on which make and model of cutter I've got, I can actually take each individual cut line that I'm going to do a different, use a different tool for and apply different settings to each tool. And that's very, very useful when you've got complex shapes and difficult things to cut, perforate, fold, etc, etc. One last thing I will show you about this, you may be asking, well, how on earth do I set all these different types of contour cutting lines? Well, that's quite easy as well. So if I click on this fold line here and come over to this flyout, you can see I can set, set it to fold contour. I can click on this one. I can set it to uh, cut contour, but you see it changes its color. So that should be perf color. And I've set that one there to cut contour. Now, the other thing you can do too is you can apply different types of perforation. So if I go to, I've set this to um, perforation color and you can see it's that green shade. If I come down to custom dashed lines, you can actually see I can set the way the actual perforation is cut when I send it to the cutter. So the moment I've got it set to score one and I can also do custom line styles. So I've got score one set to one inch in a very small space, one inch then a very small well, gap you could call it. Uh, to make that more clear, I'll make that point 0.1 and you can see what the preview is showing you there. It's showing you that it's going to be a 1 inch line, a 0.1 inch gap, a 1 inch line, a 0.1 inch gap, so that when I cut this out, so we'll move that out, when I cut that out, 1 inch little gap, 1 inch little gap, <laughs> out of a piece of card and eject it from the cutter, it will just basically, I'll say tear out or pop out or push out, um, and you can create actual, you can click new, and I can say score 2, click OK and I can make that say a different setting. I can make it slightly bigger or I can make it a big gap and then a very small gap like so and then a different size gap. So I've got a lot of control on how I create perforation lines. So not only can I apply perforation lines to shapes like this, I can actually set how the perforation line is actually cut from the cutter. So that's how you do those sorts of things. So let's move on to the next job. So now I'm going to talk about the cutting order and by that what I mean is where the blade comes down and what parts it cuts and in what order it cuts those. So I'm going to click on send to be cut. I'm not going to worry too much about any settings here because I'm just trying to make the point about how you can adjust this. So I click cut now and you can see it loads in the vinyl spooler. We're not going to proceed with cutting because I'm going to show you this cutting order tool here which is down here. So if I check on that you see this window pops up. Now it gives you a preview of where it's going to cut and you can actually run that as a little simulation like so. And I can come up here and I can change some of these options. I can set it to reduce feed. Okay, so what this is trying to do is stop the cutter from moving in and out too much. If I play that you'll see what's happening here. So it's trying to stop the cutter from going back and forward in great big sweeps. So that's the idea of that particular option. You've got strip mode. What this does is try to work and cut everything within a particular strip and it goes to the next strip and then to the next strip like this. Back and forward and it cuts out strips as it goes. And the final one here is reduce travel. So the idea of this is to make sure that the cutter actually doesn't move too, too much going back and forward. The reason why we're doing this is because cutters tend to have um, tracking errors. So if you go back and forward a, a large number of times, uh, if you try to go back to the original place you started from, you might find the cutter can't quite find that spot because as it goes back and forward, it does lose a little bit of its accuracy. So I hit play here and see what it's doing here. So you can experiment with your cut files and if you find you're having a problem with uh, tracking or accuracy, by all means come in here and adjust these things. Now if I was cutting this on a card like we were talking about earlier, we might want to cut out these letters and the problem is is that you don't want them to fall out on you before they're completed. So you can cut the insides first. And if you check that, what it will do is if you're looking at this O up here, it will come in and cut the inside of the O, then it will cut the outside of the O. And if it happens to fall out of the material or the media, um, it's not going to be a major problem. So that's how we set that setting. Let's move on to the next one. So here we have a very large cut file. Now when I say that, you can see it's 62 inches by 48 inches. And if I try to send this to my cutter, you can see what happens. It simply cannot fit. If I rotate it, again, it simply cannot fit. Basically, this cut file here is just simply too large for our cutter. 
And we can see the program's warning us of this by doing dimensions in red and you've got this exclamation mark up here saying artwork too big, etc. So this is the limitations of Vinyl Master Cut. So for this sort of cut file, we need a tiling option or a panelling option, depends on what you want to call it. But essentially what we want to do is cut this into tiles or into separate panels. So we can send them as individual uh, tiles or cut files to the cutter and it can actually handle the width, whereas in this case it can't. And you'll notice up here there is no tiling option. So at this point, uh, the only real way of doing this is to upgrade to a high level of the software, and I'll show you that now. So I've now loaded up Vinyl Master Pro, and I'm using the demo version so that you can download and install this and try it for yourself. We've got the same artwork here, and I'm going to send this to the cutter, and you can see that it's still too big, and if I rotate it, it's still the same problem that we had in Vinyl Master Cut as we have here in Vinyl Master Pro. Now what I can do is you'll now see these tiling panels tab and if I click on that and I check automatic tiling you can see what's happened here. What the program is doing is it's saying we're going to cut this piece and then we're going to cut this second piece and we're going to overlap the two. So I can set the overlap to say whatever I like but I usually use half an inch and what that means is that when I lay this out in the job I can perfectly overlap one piece over the other half an inch and that means if there's any shrinkage or anything on site I'm not going to have a problem with that and it gives me a little bit of flexibility. I can also equalize the tile sizes which means they're the same width and I can also cut tile crossings and that's a very important thing to be able to do because what that means is because what that means is a cut line will be cut along the length of the tile here meaning that weeding is a lot lot easier. So that's how tiling is done in the high levels of the software and this is available in Vinyl Master Pro and in DSR. There are some more advanced tools and edit tiles here and this allows you to do things like put in align marks and lift marks and set an overlap so that you can actually chop through the artwork. I'll give you an example of that. If I set the overlap at say, or half an inch is fine, I select the artwork, left click on the ruler and drag it down, let it go, you can see what it's done. It's actually chopped the artwork for me. And there's a whole lot more of other advanced tools in there and I won't go into those now. You can have a look at those for yourself. Now the big difference between Vinyl Master Cut and Letter to Vinyl Master Pro and DSR is the cut documents. Now by cut documents this is what I mean. Now as you can see here I've got similar coloured objects here that I might do for a client and they might ask me to do these all the time and I've got to come back and recut them um, and I may have new ones to design and, and add to the list. So what I can do is create a cut document. So I can select my artwork, come up here and go send a cut file you can see this module comes up, send artwork to a cut file, and I can actually choose what I want to cut, etc. And I click send, and it sends it over to my uh, cut file, and you can see here I've got this thing called .vcut. Now I can actually save this and reopen it at any time, and I can actually add more jobs to it. So I've got the black section, and I've got this brownie coloured section here. So I can do things like nest, as you can see, and I can position these things on my artwork, and I can undo that of course and I can manage my cut files. Now if I go back here I've got a couple more over here so I want to add these two to that particular cut file so I can go send a cut file and adds those two I click send and you can see that it just adds it to the list like so and of course I can click nest again I've got other options like that edit window I showed you earlier with all these options and from here I can send it to I can cut the page or I can cut all so I click cut page and it will send that with a whole bunch of extra options over to my vinyl cutter. So these are the kind of options you get with cut documents which allow you to manage your cut files, save your cut files and then add to them. So if you've got say a whole bunch of black to cut out and you want to keep adding and adding and adding uh, you know, black cut files to a particular job that you wish to cut out and you know, nest it all together to save a lot of media, this is the advantage of cut documents. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. Um, if you are interested in upgrading, just come over here. Uh, you can go to fcws3.com um, and if you scroll down here, uh, it will show you, you can click here to buy the upgrade. Um, you can also learn about why you would upgrade. So if I click on, for example, DSR, which we were just looking at a moment ago, loads it up there and you can see these are the sorts of reasons so in addition to cut letter and pro so if you have all those versions or pro you get all this extra 
tools and features. Um, extras as in, you know, fonts and logos and all the rest of it. Um, and if you wish to upgrade, you, well, you can click on the buy button here and click upgrade license. This window that opens up, you just type in your product serial number, you follow it through. The good thing about this is once the order is processed, you immediately get back the new PSN and a download link and you can instantly download and activate the software and start cutting with it, designing and cutting immediately. Um, and you can also do it from the US Cutter website, so you go to uscutter.com. Uh, if you get to the Vinyl Master section, that will load up and you will see uh, the upgrade section here. You click on that. Um, and that loads up and again you click on this and it will take you to the cart.